Hurry, everyone. Uh, you're good. The Zoom mic. Yeah. You're good. Am I good? Yeah. Someone else is not moving. Who's zoomed in? Yeah, someone's zoomed in. Zoom out. Hello? Better? No. Sounds like it's a Christian. No. 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 Nobody. Oh. Yeah, it's just this one. Make sure we get on. Yeah, it's the room. The live stream. It's the live stream. Is there audio on my computer? There we go. I mean, I mean your speaker. Such great software. <laughs> All right, everyone. So thank you so much. I'm so glad we have a packed house. Um, this is really exciting, and I'm like super nervous. So I'm just gonna like full disclaimer. Um, I this is like my first time attending this conference, and it's very humbling. Um, I think being with um, people who I think who have like shaped and influenced my experiences on the web. Um, so I just really wanted to say thank you. Um, and yeah. Uh, so my name is Mel Hussain. Um, I am a senior open web engineer at Boku, and I'm going to be uh, talking to y'all about rethinking translation in JavaScript package distribution. Oh yeah. Anybody else excited? Yeah. Oh, I, look, no hands on the right. Can we do like a right east, east, east versus west in this room? No? Oh, oh well, sorry. <laughs> that, was, that was crass, I apologize. <laughs> Not the intention. Too soon. Too soon. <laughs> too soon? Okay. Cool. Well, um, so, um, so today's agenda uh, is what? We're going to be um, just, uh, I'm going to try to be as quick as possible uh, to um, get to the fun part. So I have a quick presentation to kind of outline and break out the problem statement. Uh, we have a surprise group activity that's going to be led by my co facilitator here, Valerie Young. Yeah, can we give it up for Valerie? <laughs> And we, if we have time, we're going to do uh, report, uh, report backs because I really want to hear from the problems, from your voices. Uh, and, um, and Valerie will also be helping uh, facilitate that along with uh, some other awesome folks that are here today. And then, um, and then we have some closing thoughts and like feel good, next steps, what's the future? Yeah, thoughts. And so, so a bit about me. I'm a first generation uh, American, child of Somali immigrants, uh, senior open web engineer at Boku. I'm multilingual, a world traveler, I'm a technology community organizer, and co host of the web platform. And I guess I'm busy, right? That's the other synthesis. <laughs> um, so, the problem that I'm excited to be talking to you all about today uh, is uh, on distributing uh, packages uh, like. We're distributing JavaScript packages that contain unnecessary bloat and polyfills from transpiled code. Uh, and so would, would anyone, uh, would, would you all agree with that statement? Yes? NPM? No? I, okay, I'm seeing, <laughs> I'm seeing some conflicted people here. Uh, so let me, let me share my story. So how does my story intersect with this problem of bloat in our dependencies? Uh, so I recently, uh, actually as of yesterday, just uh, a project that I've been working on for a while, I uh, just launched. Uh, it's an embedded video game console. Uh, so I've been working on a resource-constrained, tiny single board uh, computer uh, where I, you know, it's an electron-based project and I have the luxury of like only targeting Chrome 74 and you know, I'm ready to like use all of the modern JavaScript um, and when kind of doing some performance and budget, budget analysis uh, work and trying to figure out where is this load coming from, uh, it, looking at my dependencies, you know, I, I found a lot of load. Uh, and it was really frustrating to me because uh, I'm trying to, you know, I, I only need to target 
Chrome 74, which has a wide support for ES5 and a bunch of, uh, sorry, um, ECMAScript 2015 and a bunch of other cool uh, features beyond, beyond that spec, spec here. Uh, but my dependencies, which are actually the majority of my application, uh, were stuck in 2014. And so it was a really painful uh, thing for me, and I had to jump hoops and, uh, you know, uh, everything from, like, just, you know, use a source from GitHub and get around NPM ignore, uh, try to kind of uh, monkey patch a solution for myself so that I could um, just cut the blow uh, and, and save my, you know, uh, and, and improve performance for my, for my board. Uh, and so, so that was my problem, but why should you all care about that, right? And, and I think you should care as, as kind of shepherds and stewards of, of the web platform. Um, most, this isn't a new problem, but uh, you know, most uh, open source, uh, most projects that rely heavily on open source uh, uh, packages uh, actually leverage them to a very large extent which means that you know, the code that we write that's actually unique to our application is actually a pretty small fraction. Uh, and I think uh, there's a report that came out uh, for JavaScript in 2019, and the stats were around 10 to 1. So you know, every 10 lines of code is someone else's, and one line of code is yours. And so uh, if you kind of uh, take that metric and you look at the scale of the web and you know, how you know, obviously ubiquitous modern web applications are, um, that's a pretty big, big size of the web. Um, so it's a pretty big problem that we should all care as people who love and care about the web. Uh, so how does this affect web, uh, a web platform user experience, right? So the obvious answer, blow up means slow experiences. It means more bytes over the wire. Uh, but more importantly for me, as somebody who I think uh, is very kind of conscious about, you know, you know, billions of people that are coming online for the first time now and uh, just, uh, you know, what it means to... Uh, be a new internet user in emerging markets, working off you know uh, resource constrained devices, not necessarily a, a fancy port like like I had, but you know maybe a ten dollar phone or a thirty dollar phone, uh, where you know data, your mobile data is currency. Uh, you know so so bytes matter in emerging markets. Not only do they matter, but uh, web experiences can be like they're just detrimentally crappier <laughs> with all that JavaScript load, right? Uh, and you, you know, for, for I love the web. Uh, my it's in my like you know I'm I'm an open web engineer, right? Um, and I know you all love the web. Uh, and but in emerging markets, for for people coming online for the first time, you know they haven't had the luxury of ever owning a desktop device or non or or, or, or ever having any other way to get online. Right, and so we have these um, we have these uh, these experiences of what it means to be on the web that are shaped in, in these really constrained um, you know, on these really constrained devices, and we're competing with you know native Android apps that are already like on the device that are in their language that are you know that have pre cached uh, files uh, that are faster to use and easier to use, uh, you know. So why why would it, why would a user in an emerging market like want to use this universal VM that's like not in their language, that's slow and bloaty and like costs some money, right? And so take them a little step further, right? So as, as and, and, you know, there's user land experience of the web and as folks who understand, uh, you know, uh, the underlying mechanisms of the web, you know, we're very privileged and small community. Um, we, let's take a look and kind of examine, you know, <laughs> what this means for the health of the web and why this is bad for all of us. Uh, I want to first start that, Again, our dependencies are a huge part, the majority of our web application code that we ship, and they're stuck in 2004, uh, 14. Uh, we also have uh, native uh, uh, platform uh, uh, features that are not getting used or that are underutilized, right? And so there's uh, opportunities, there's, there's mis missed opportunity here for kind of hardening the platform and really like robustly testing new features at scale. Uh, you know, which is like really unfortunate and very sad. Uh, have you ever tried to debug transpiled code, anybody? <laughs> Not fun, right? So there's, you know, there's a bunch of native debugging tools that we, we don't even have access to in an easy way. Uh, you know, everything from source maps to being able to kind of step through, you know, uh, you know an async function uh, cleanly and sanely. Uh, you know, and la lastly, you know, all of the unnecessary bloats, uh, it's, it's not just the Low, there's a bug factor that's actually pretty serious and distributed at scale. Uh, so, uh, and lastly, unreadable code and all of that 
lost kind of author intent, um, which is like, you know, uh, just an unfortunate thing, you know. So the days of view source are, are definitely gone in modern drugstore development, right? So, so who's like, you know, so I, I kind of want to double click into the bug problem because I, I think this is one that's not often talked about in our community. Um, and I have invited um, Henry Zhu here, who's uh, from the, uh, one of the lead maintainers of Babel, um, who I've been kind of um, workshopping a lot of stuff with uh, as I've been getting invested in trying to fix this problem and what, what can we do to make this better. I've been talking to him and lots of other people. Um, and it's, it's kind of, an, it's unearthed this, this world of like cryptic bugs at scale. Uh, and, you know, and we're shipping code that's heavily transpiled, heavily polyfilled, and, our, our, and, and we're building up upon that infrastructure, which now means that we're also relying on these bugs at scale, which, you know, which means, you know, library authors that like, even if they want to publish uh, uh, native, uh, like uh, untranspiled polyfill, you know, real JavaScript, right? Like stage, stage four JavaScript. Uh, th they, they don't even feel comfortable doing it because people have come to rely on bugs in, in the implementation of, of various kind of uh, polyfills and uh, bugs that we've exported throughout our tooling system. And so I just want to kind of walk you through this matrix a little bit. Can everybody read this uh, as up here for folks in the back? Can I get a thumbs up? Yeah, fantastic. So. I want to, this is, this is there, there's subtle differences in, in these little boxes, but they're all really important to understand. So we have transpiled code. I'm going to start like one, two, three, four. So transpiled code and polyfills can never, can, can sometimes never, ever, 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 ever equal native implementation. Can we all agree on that? Right? So that's problem number one. Problem number two, that's interesting. Transpiled code and polyfills have been implemented and they work, but everybody knows software has bugs. There's bugs you know about, bugs you don't know about. And there's bugs that we do know about and bugs that we also sometimes don't know about until much later um, that we're kind of shipping and exporting at scale. Uh, so that's, that's bad, right? And so it, there's this weird responsibility matrix of like whose bug is it anyway? And so let's flip the table to looking at browsers. You know, so one of the problems is, you know, we have, uh, 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 transpiled code and polyfilled code. Sometimes it's uh, um, for you know different targets that we're shipping uh, for different browsers. But uh, an underlying problem in kind of trying to um, unify uh, um, um, interoperability here is that we have variable uh, native support uh, for for Git for features. Additionally, we also have browser bugs, right? So is it a browser bug? Is it a transpiler bug? Is it like a half-baked feature? Is it, you know, so it's, it's pretty complicated. And when you talk to folks in the bundler and, uh, and uh, 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 trans uh, compiler community, um, and you, you talk to kind of library authors that are uh, publishing at scale, um, you'd be surprised at the number of kind of cryptic issues that pop up um, that really hold the web back. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to talk faster. Okay. So, uh, and lastly, I just kind of want to put it out there as a public service announcement. You know, transpile code and, you know, and, and, and the use of, use of a polyfill was, it's, it's meant to be a stopgap, right? It was never, ever, ever, ever meant to be the status quo. It was never meant to be something that we just stuck with forever. Uh, and they've kind of become these fixtures, these permanent fixtures that we just like happily install and like don't often question. Um, and so there's an interesting case study that I'd like to point out here, uh, because remember we talked about uh, two kinds of code, right? There's like the code that you've authored and then there's the code that came from, you know, our wonderful um, contributors from all around the world. Um, and web developers, I think, have solved this problem for their application code by creating um, uh, a, 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 a dynamic way for, uh, for us to be able to um, pick our uh, uh, compile targets and, uh, and, and therefore kind of ship up like the minimally uh, transpiled version of uh, our code that's going to uniformly work for you know the browsers that we're targeting, um, and so this case study is kind of called Web Developers Stage Less Than Four <laughs> JavaScript, uh, and uh, you know for our love of proposals and, and Babel presets. Uh, so it's a really simple slide that kind of demonstrates. Uh, are folks familiar with Babel preset M? I'm assuming most people, small half people. Can I get hands? Are you familiar with this? Okay. Okay, so for those who are not, um, uh, so when we first kind of began our six to five, like, you know, uh, uh, shift of code bases, 
we can have these yearly presets where we say, okay, um, you know, you can transpile down to a baseline of 2015, and then uh, 2016 rolled around, and we said 2016, and then 17. We just kind of pushed the baseline forward and forward and forward and forward. Um, and then we realized, oh, no, 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 actually, you know what, that was a bad idea. This really isn't scaling well. Um, we created this awesome uh, way of basically dynamically uh, um, uh, uh, kind of adjusting our compile targets, uh, and and that's great. So this is this is this is kind of fixed in some sense for web application code, um, but there's a serious cost to like iterating at scale, because you know those 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 presets that I showed you, you know, 2015, 16, 17, they still have really wide scale usage on the web, and it doesn't matter. Henry's right here. He can tell you like it's been deprecated for years. 2015, as of this week, was still 1.2 million weekly downloads. Like, which is kind of insane. Um, so as web developers, there's a pretty large cost um, to kind of some of the foresights that we make even in, with good intentions. And I, I think for me, you know, in thinking about this problem, it's, I've learned that like this is a pretty multifaceted problem. And multifaceted means this is something that touches every single like, element of our distribution pipeline. Um, it starts all the way like it, it starts when you know a library author decides they're going to publish, and it ends when the last byte of JavaScript has been parsed and like downloaded by the user uh, on a given target. And so, in thinking about the scope of this distribution pipeline, I've identified these um, kind of nine stakeholder groups as interesting uh, and not not interesting, sorry, as as kind of um, critical to uh, coming up with. Uh, a solution for this problem because I think we've kind of tried to solve it from certain angles and that's not that's really not, not really going to work because <laughs> this isn't something that's going to ever just be solved by the node community or by like webpack or by Babel like no this is like a a, 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 a full like an ecosystem wide thing and so I'm just going to read out all of these and help so you synthesize it um, it's JavaScript library authors npm engineering uh, npm being our kind of de facto uh, 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 um, Package distribution uh, uh, for modern web, uh, Babel, Tech, TypeScript, and other compiler maintainers, bundle maintainers, web developers, and web developers here is kind of a big frame uh, because it, for me it's web developers that are working at scale, um, web developers that are working kind of at an intermediate scale, and 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 really you know for me it's it's about low low floors, you know, uh, keeping it, keeping in mind that not everybody has a fancy engineering team um, and. You know, can spend hours tweaking their webpack config files, right? Um, so, so we have content delivery uh, network uh, folks. I, I couldn't decide whether to call them engineers or infrastructure people. So maybe somebody here can help me come up with a better word after the session. I just I just called them CDN folks. Uh, node governance, web platform engineers, and web 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 specification authors. Yeah, almost done. Yeah, yeah. We're literally, literally, we're almost done. Yeah. Perfect. So I'm, 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 I'm being like ushered off the stage. So, so, so these are the people that I think are important to this conversation. That's what you need to know. And what I'm asking you today, why I came here today, I see this summit as a really interesting opportunity to kind of get a snapshot of data from people that are a lot, like that fit a lot of those buckets. Um, I also think it starts here. Right, the, the front end community is kind of high tracked NPM. We all know that. <laughs> Bauer is dead. No more tweet tweet. <laughs> right, so uh, for better or worse, you know, we're, we're, we've, 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 hijacked your, we've hijacked your ecosystem um, at, for, for lots of good reasons, too. Uh, and so I think starting here for me is actually a very like, important, um, important first step in, in kind of uh, getting, get, like, understanding better understanding the landscape and better understanding what like what's um, like what what we, what we need to do and how we can move forward and so we're going to do a really quick facilitated discussion uh, next uh, where all I want everybody here to do is kind of think a little bit about like we're going to think of it like you hopefully you hopefully you know what group you belong to and if you don't belong to anyone like I'm just do like a math not random and pick one and and also tell me after this um, if you think that you know uh, th th there's a blind spot here but but um, with your stakeholder hat and, and keep in mind that you can have multiple hats how does this problem affect you right and I told you how it affected me 
uh, somebody who's trying to compile or trying to um, uh, ship a product on a resource constrained device. And I told you, you know, how I, how I fixed it in a hacky way. Um, and, and for me, the requirements to any solution is, is definitely going to be, I, I need source, you know, and that's not going to be the same requirement for everyone, uh, but that's mine. And so all, I, all we want to know today is what, what, what is, what, how does this problem affect you and how does it intersect with your workflows as, 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 uh, as engineers and, and what are the requirements and what the non-goals are, right? We're not going to like come up with a solution in 30 minutes. Like that's just not going to happen. And I, don't want that to be the focus of the conversation. And so we're not designing a solution. We're not driving consensus. Right? Um, and we're not going to discuss implementation details. So this is just a rapid fire brainstorming session. And uh, with that, um, I want to, um, we're going to have some facilitators. So Valerie's kind of going to be leading the facilitators. Um, and I'll kind of be jumping in and out. Uh, we have Valerie Young, uh, Tara Minit I apologize. Philip Dunkel and Adam Mills. Actually, you should stand, stand up so that we can see you and the faces. Yeah, so Philip, Jory, where's Jory? Story of Jory. All right, Jory, Tara, Philip, I'll adjust the slides for posterity data. Uh, Adam and Valerie and myself and Mel. Uh, and so, yeah. Okay, so to, we're actually breaking up into groups. And so you need to sit closer to each other. So I'm Everyone who's participating in this discussion, which I think is everyone in this room, unless someone's secretly doing work for work instead of hanging out at the conference, laptops. Um, but actually, bring your uh, laptop with you because you're going to need it. So everyone in the room, if you could fill into tables of six, yeah. these first four tables here and the four tables over here along this wall yeah. so that there's space. But everyone come up and sit in a seat on one of those four tables so we get all um work out so you have uh eight groups of six so bring your laptop if you want no. so the this this four table it, you can stay there if you're in one of these four tables but if you're not come over and sit down on one of these four tables and uh these four tables. yeah these four tables yes I would highly encourage everybody to move around. Please don't sit near a friend. Please. <laughs> Just kidding. That's impossible. You'll give instructions once you're sitting in groups of six.
five. Um, counterclockwise. Uh, so that there's a group number. There's also for for the idea that you're submitting in that form, you'll you'll submit the form multiple times each time you feel like you have an insight that you need to you want to tell ML or or the group that's going to be working on this problem. So you submit it multiple times with your group number. Also, what you kind of what, what perspective you're bringing, like what stakeholder hat you have on, and then answers to the questions that ML was asking before, like how how has this problem affected you in the past? How have you encountered it? How does it affect your work? Uh, that's one, one question. And then the next question is, what are some constraints you have on the solution to this problem? Um, so now in your little groups, because hopefully you don't know someone in it, uh, go, go around and introduce yourself and maybe a little bit about your, what you do or maybe just your stakeholder hat if you have one. Um, and then discuss and record the problems in the URL link. We have these f lovely facilitators. Raise your hands. Um, some of them have already claimed a group, so you two each get that group. Um, Tara, do you want to join maybe this group here at the end? Yeah, and Jory over here. They're just here to help, kind of, kind of like help keep you on track and maybe point out ideas when you should be submitting them in the form. Um, and uh, you guys will get a facilitator half of the time, so we'll join you. And everyone else gets a full facilitator. Okay, great. So go ahead, introduce yourselves, discuss. Um, 
Hello, Berlin. Can anybody hear me? Hi. Hi. Um, Rick here from the internet. I'm wondering if there's uh, if all the discussion group numbers have been accounted for, and if not, can I use number eight to do a remote submission? Thanks, Valerie. <laughs> Thank you. 
quite some time in the region. And that's why for us, Cyrus would never get to do it. And those things are really important, I would say, like you know, the same for Senate democracy. Um, 
A number of points about transpiler fatigue. Uh, learning curve is hard, especially if you're building projects that require TypeScript and Babel at the same time. Uh, just training developers on those tools is challenging. Uh, bundler fatigue is also hard to debug uh, problems that happen when you're uh, updating any dependency tree or seeing any changes in that tree and your problems are now 10x because you get a trace of all that information. Um, another interesting point is like when, when big, big uh, websites have multiple applications, like single page applications are served from the same domain, uh, all of a sudden you have, you know, end level complexity of all the different packages and bundling that you're doing on the same domain and that affects the user experience as well. Um, in terms of constraints or requirements, uh, we came up with a couple of interesting ones. The platform in an app structure should facilitate separation of concerns of whatever the developer experience needs, i.e. tooling, transpiling, and so on, versus the user experience needs, i.e. the browser rendering or the server-side running process. There's a mechanism for allowing both of those things to operate independently um, and not bleeding that, that context between them. Um, and also tooling that provides deterministic bundle sizing choices during the development process. Thank you. Well, so you're going to clap. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, the bar is set really high in table number one. Uh, also, for those of you leaving, there's a really important part of the presentation left, so I would highly encourage you to say, like, one tiny little bit that, that that's important. Yeah. yeah. Um, <clears throat> So uh, this is actually a group decision. So uh, although I'm, I'm a speaker, so like I said, we actually reject the actual premise. We believe that transpiling is very good. We've examined a number of things, debugging the difficulties of doing it, uh, code bloat, uh, and the reasons why we actually transpile. There are some difficult edge cases we have using TypeScript and being forced down to transpile to an exact version of Node for some big enterprise. We're very restricted. We do have latest version, but we only get one version of the latest version because that's all we get. Um, so as a whole, we agree with the minimalist approach to the packages going out, but uh, we do not believe there is a problem to be solved. Can I ask a follow-up question? This is fascinating. So this is how complicated is to solve this problem with drive consensus. And was everybody at your table TypeScript, like from the TypeScript community? No. So I'm curious for the folks that who just an edge case. that was an edge case. Interesting. That's fascinating. Okay, that's cool. Thank you. Group number three has a lot of JavaScript uh, library authors and a Babel maintainer. We felt that this made us not very representative of a typical JavaScript using population. Um, Babel, we decided, is both a problem and a solution. Uh, the library maintainers among us are very happy that we have Babel to allow us to address that compat with earlier versions of Node. But when we uh, go out and look at the wider JavaScript audience, we find that people often have tool chains that they've inherited or perhaps set up following cookbooks, and there's a lot of complexity there that they're not necessarily ready for. When they go off the beaten path, they end up feeling resentful of this complexity that they didn't sign up for. It sometimes bounce out of translation even though it could benefit them because they don't have the time to invest in learning the tools. So we point to tool chain complexity as, as one of our problems. Uh, not many of us use TypeScript, but we also find there's complexity and missing documentation there that make it more difficult to use than we would like it to be. Thank you. Yeah. Number four. Yay. I would, uh, so, so. I think we kind of bashed on uh, transpiling over here on this table a little bit, um, and it, it really just comes down to a number of uh, number of factors that we, uh, most people don't take the time to understand what the code is being transpiled to, right? And then end up with a, a number of issues when they need to solve problems, whether they're performance or you know functional issues. Um, some of the other um, issues is when um, uh, you have multiple libraries that are that are using transpiling that use uh, competing polyfills. Uh, you know, some you know, different you know, versions of a, a promise or company promises, or uh, I've seen a few others where they end up conflicting with one another, trying to play, apply the same polyfills to the same intrinsics. Um, 
Um, yeah, we did talk about some of the, the, the comparisons with uh, native add-ons and some of the same kind of issues uh, there. So we, we went a little afield of the, of, of, of the topic, but it was a good set. So. Oh, the fragmented group number five. <laughs> yeah, well, I've been, yeah, I've been, I've been voluntold that I should do this. So. <laughs> oh, microphone, I love it. Um, so uh, I have no idea what other people said, and so I'm, I guarantee I'm just going to repeat what the other table said. Uh, but I, I was at seconds. But um, the two things that came up, uh, we, we submitted three forms, but it's really two basic problems, and I hope I can remember both of them. Yes, I can. Uh, one is that the debugging experience is awful with transpilation, which is not a surprise to anybody. I think you, know, you said that, and I'm sure everybody else said that. Um, uh, awful both in the browser and awful, awful error for in Node on the server because Node does not support source maps. Um, and then the other thing that came up is that people transpile their code, browsers, and stats, and Benchmarks show that that code is faster than using idiomatic implement, you know, idiomatic JavaScript. So browser, uh, uh, you know, people people who are working on optimizing V8 and other JavaScript engines don't bother optimizing for the idiomatic JavaScript because people aren't using it. It's kind of a chicken and egg problem. If people aren't using the idiomatic JavaScript. The browsers aren't going to prioritize optimizing for it, so it never gets optimized, and people never stop transpiling. That's you a, did a phenomenal job, dude. You should be doing this talk. Cool. I didn't, if I didn't know, so, if I had any idea how expensive this was and it wasn't a lot, I'd totally mic drop. Oh, so, <laughs> well, so, so can I ask, um, was that the last group, Valerie? And did everybody also submit the feedback that they just verbally shared? Like, fantastic. So, first of all, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, this was an exercise in trying to understand, take a snapshot of the landscape, drive requirements, get constraints, understand where people disagree, understand where they agree, so that I, I can kind of shepherd this, this forward throughout the community. And so what's next? How do we keep this conversation going? Well, I'll, be, I'll be here on day two. Uh, this, this data set will be published. Um, we can have lots of hallway conversations tomorrow. If folks are inspired and want to like grab a room and have a, a you know unconference session or what a, a breakout session on this, I'm happy happy to, to do that as well. Um, but I, I kind of want to be a little bit more um, directed in my in my description of this of this uh, of this problem. Um, so I, I think it, it's obvious it's going to take a cross functional group to do this. Um, this is a problem that spans both the node and the web communities, uh, as well as all the peripheral infrastructure that make the web happen. Um, and I am putting forward an initiative um, after just talking to lots of stakeholders in this community. It's kind of actually been, it's a little bit, it's been an informal uh, initiative already, um, but it, it's as of like today, like literally like new org just created um, and uh, to basically solve this problem. So it's an independent JavaScript package distribution community group um, whose sole focus is to drive a uh, solution um, and, 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 and figure out how, how we can solve this problem throughout our ecosystem. Uh, if you're interested in contributing feedback, uh, if you're interested in kind of helping shepherd a proposal, whatever, like we want it and um, please come find me and that's an order that's created. So I think if you're, um, what I ask is if you're interested in just like uh, keeping abreast of the conversation. Um, issue number 170 is my issue on the node repository. Just thumbs up it and I will come find you or come find me um, as well. Find which, which node repository? Oh, I, I apologize. Thank you. Um, uh, I meant the summit repository. Oh, okay, thank no, you. Summit. Thank you very much for asking me to clarify that. Uh, issue 170. 170. Yeah. And yeah. And so um, and then I'm going to publish the results of this so you guys can all synthesize it and like and, and whatnot. And I kind of, this is a huge problem, right? You guys agree that this is a massive problem. We're unfurling ourselves from all this kind of complex technical debt. But I want to leave you this, with this quote, never doubt that a small group of citizens, of concerned citizens can change the world. Indeed, it is the only thing that ever has. And so with that, I say thank you for your time and let's go have dinner. Thank <laughs> you.